Weirdo Benjo. Hello there everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. I have gone down an emulation rabbit hole. This happens to me every few weeks and I think this time it was prompted by me playing Mario Kart Wii uh, in VR on Dolphin VR on my PC. But this time what I'm playing with I think is even cooler. Today I'm going to play a bunch of retro games natively on the Quest 2. These things are all inside the headset. The ROMs, the emulators. Now you can't hear the noises I can hear because for some reason I can't get the game sound to capture in the video. It's really strange, but I just had a zombie make some weird noises in my ear. All of this stuff today is running natively on the Quest 2. And it's actually really easy to set up. Now I'm probably not the right person to do a tutorial video, but if there's enough request for one I'll try and put something together but for now I'll put all the links to the videos that I use today to get this running myself. Now I'm starting with House of the Dead 2 and 3 running on the Wii because I think this is actually probably the most impressive uh, because this has touchscreen controls which basically feel like using an actual light gun <laughs> and it's really really smart. So right now I'm holding the trigger on my right oculus controller or quest controller I should say now and that is allowing me to move it around the screen freely I'm shooting by pressing the B button on this Xbox controller I'm holding in my other hand which is basically like my nunchuck I guess and to reload I just literally aim off the screen <laughs> it's really really smart the only thing I can't seem to do here is capture the game sound so I'll have to play some generic normal uh, background music for this video but I am hearing all the noises um, I'll try and capture some for you using an external mic Ugh! just so you can hear some of it I don't wanna die or I can do the music for you and the audio now this is actually running really smoothly there's tiny tiny spikes of slowdown um, but it's nothing that would impact the playability of the game. Ah! I guess it remains to be seen. If we get to some boss sections and it really slows down, <laughs> then that might be a problem. But right now, this is running really, really well. Hello? Oh my god. Ah! Swamp thing! Now, all you need to get this running is a PC to install the emulators uh, RetroArch, Dolphin, whatever emulator you need. copy of side quest on your PC a Bluetooth controller I'm using an Xbox one uh, and a quest now once it's on the quest ah, get off once it's on the quest you don't need to use the PC anymore so I'm using this is all native this is running inside the quest as you can see ah, no um, here I am literally just sitting here <laughs> It's really crazy that this works, but the Quest 2 is actually a decent emulation machine. Alright, boss fight time. Is it possible? Oh my god, probably not. Oh yeah, it is. I've got to hit him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah! No! There we go. Stay away from me. Oh! Now I am using the Quest 2's native capturing oh! with no increases to quality, so... Normally, if I capture the quest, I try to throw in full rate capture, but I wanted to ensure that the games run smoothly, so I'm just capturing natively, so it might look a little bit low frame, um, but it's running super smooth in here for me. So as I said, I don't want today's video to be a long one, I just want this to be a short overview of what the Quest 2 is capable of in terms of emulation. So as you can see on the Quest 2, I'm, I'm here, this is my Quest, I'm using the Bubbles background because I think it's the least CPU intensive, it's really basic, and I want to make sure it can run these games smooth. Uh, I come onto my apps, I go to Unknown Sources, and here are my emulators that I've currently got in here. Now RetroArch is probably the best because it's kind of a one-stop shop for emulation. Within RetroArch you can load different cores which are basically emulators which uh, cover pretty much every console imaginable. So these are the ones you can download and it's an endless, endless list. There's Atari there, there's MAME, there's Commodore, there's Game Boy, there's PlayStation 1, N64, all of that. 
Now, sometimes a particular console will have several different cores. So N64, I think, has three or four. Uh, PlayStation 1 has three or four. DS, as you can see there, there's three different ones. Now, it's all about just testing them to see which one runs the game's best or just going online because someone else online will already have the answer for you. Now, let's start with some games in here. Um, I'm going to probably start with... Let's, let's start from the start and then work our way forward, I guess. Let's show some gameplay from SNES. So in here I've got a few SNES games. I've got Mario Kart, I've got Mario World and Super Metroid. Let's just go into Mario World and switch over to my Xbox controller. Now I've mapped out all the controls for what I think is comfortable. Um, and I can just <laughs> use the controller to play the game. Now... They run super smooth. Everything up to GameCube, um, I've found to run really smoothly. You can also increase the size of the screen. So there we go. I've got a massive, pixely Mario screen now. Why did I come here? This isn't where I want to be. Get out of here. So as you can see, Mario World on the SNES here runs absolutely perfectly. As I expected it would do. Um, something like this should be running on the Quest. <laughs> But it's still mad to see. It gets more impressive when you start getting to um, N64 and then GameCube. GameCube actually runs really well. Except for Simpsons Hit and Run, which slows down a little bit when you get in the car. But I'll try and show you that. So that's probably enough of a test to show you that Mario works just fine. I mean, look at it. It's perfect. It looks great in here. Um, I've probably blown the screen up a little bit too big. <laughs> um... But that's something you can adjust on the fly. You don't have to have it this size. I just wanted to stretch it out because I know the capture will be a little bit smaller than it appears to me. Um, let's kick it up a notch and go to something a little bit more intensive, shall we? Now, one more thing to note. RetroArch is actually really versatile in terms of how you set it up and how you make it run for you. If you're happy to dig into the settings and tinker with it, you can do some really cool things. Now, I've set up some basic hotkeys. If I press L and R, I bring up a menu. Now, in this menu, I can close the content I'm currently playing, take a screenshot, I can save a state. So when I jump back into the game, I'm back here. I can do all sorts of things from this menu. Um, and it's important to set up the hotkeys so that you can do things like close the content. Here is Minish Cap running on a Game Boy Advance core in RetroArch. As you can see, running super smoothly as well. I've shrunk the screen back down because if you blow these screens up for a Game Boy Advance game, like that's just like... Uh, uh, you can see each glorious individual pixel. And you know, some people might like that. Some people might want to see each individual pixel, but I think a more conservative size screen looks a lot nicer for something like this. But yeah, Game Boy Advance not had any problems running anything on the Quest 2 so far. Hello. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Zelda. Um, yeah, no problems running Game Boy Advance. This, much like SNES and Mega Drive, runs perfectly. I think that era, or that style of game, 32-bit, 16-bit, I'm actually not sure what bit um, the Game Boy Advance was, but that era is going to run with no problems at all. It's when you jump up to PlayStation 1, N64, you might start to experience some slowdown in things, but I haven't personally. Right, let's kick it up a notch now. Here's GoldenEye on the N64, a game that's kind of weird to emulate. Um, I've, I've tried it on loads of emulators in the past, and oftentimes it kind of runs pretty badly. But here it's running really well. Um, it's running as well as it ran on the N64, I'd say. Because I think it didn't actually run particularly well on the N64. I think it did have a lot of framey issues. Take that! Now, I did say at the start of this video that for some reason I can't get the quest to capture the sounds of the games that I'm playing. It's really weird. When I use native quest capture, I don't get any of the sounds. So if I unplug my headphones, and then I pump it up, Hopefully you'll be able to hear it, if I just stay quiet for a second. Hopefully you can hear that. Ah!
Nope. We're going into the bunker. We're going into the bunker. Oh. Oh, there we go. Plug my headphones back in. Hopefully you could hear the sounds there. So the game is giving me the sounds. For some reason, it's just not picking them up in the capture. Unsure why. That's the first time I've come across that. Um, using the Quest 2 to record internal gameplay or internal anything. Really strange. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it is giving me the sounds and they're playing at full speed. So I just wanted to show you that for reference. All right, Mario Kart 64. Obviously, I'm picking Yoshi. Why wouldn't I pick Yoshi? Yoshi is the best. Uh, let's jump into it. Here we go. So I just, it's just a really neat thing. I mean, I don't know what the actual application for it would be. Perhaps you've just got the one TV or you don't have a very big TV and you want to see these games on a bigger screen or you just want the privacy of being able to play them inside your headset ah, whilst not annoying anyone else in the house. There is obviously going to be an application for playing emulated old school retro games on your Quest um, but I'm sure some people would say why are you doing this if you have a PC because you could just play them on the PC but I think it's just cool. One thing about me, um, I really rate emulation. I've always been fascinated with emulation. Um, and I think it's a really important way to preserve the history of games when so many games are no longer readily available on current systems um, or are just restricted due to the fact that they cost so much. Buying them through secondhand means or channels, uh, things like eBay, where those prices have just skyrocketed over the last few years to the point where they're just unattainable for most people. But everyone should be able to enjoy the heritage of video games and see where this stuff came from. Peach, how dare you? It's just dawned on me that I'm sitting here playing ROMs and emulated old school games on my Quest 2 as a Quest ambassador. Probably against some kind of T's and C's somewhere. Ah oh well, it is what it is. It is what it is. I love emulation and you can't stop me from loving emulation. Up next is a slice of PS1 emulation. Here's Croc running wonderfully. One of my favourite games uh, from when I was younger. Although playing it now, this game is so hard. Like, I don't know how I ever managed to even beat like the first few levels. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I just didn't. Now on PS1 I've tested Resident Evil, Silent Hill, uh, the Die Hard trilogy game, the Alien trilogy game, and of course Croc. And again, they all run perfectly. Um, I've had no issues with slowdown with any of them. N64 and PS1 seems to be kind of the sweet spot in terms of pushing the emulation inside of Quest 2 to the very limit. Like, yes, Wii works, and yes, GameCube works, but there is a little bit of slowdown with some ah, games um, that you have to take into consideration when trying to play those systems. Yeah, I think PS1 and N64 is the point at which this kind of little experiment maxes out in terms of playability and stability. Um, you're going to have to adjust for some weird things happening ah, if you want to play GameCube or higher. I haven't tested Dreamcast, um, but again, it should in theory be possible using RetroArch or using a Dreamcast emulator. I think it's Flycast or Redream are the two emulators that I would use for Dreamcast. I think it's Flycast and Redream. Okay, we're really pushing it now. So this is GameCube. Now this is running in Dolphin rather than RetroArch. And again, I think this is running really smoothly, considering it's running natively inside the Quest 2. Um, not connected to a PC, not streaming this. Wind Waker exists inside my headset and it's running as well as it is. <laughs> and that's pretty impressive, in my opinion. It's, I mean, I've tried to emulate this game on uh, PC systems and have had less favorable results than I'm getting right now. The Quest 2 is actually a really impressive emulation machine and it's not something I'd really thought about before this weekend when I tried Mario Kart Wii on my PC using Dolphin VR and then I started thinking oh okay maybe I can get things running actually inside the Quest and yeah you can you really can oh come here come here now come here oh, wait hold on there's a way to do this there's a way to do this Pig doesn't care if you're crouching. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Why are these pigs so damn hard to catch? I, I imagine a pig in the real world wouldn't probably wouldn't be this hard to catch. Right, so this is Wind Waker. 
running beautifully. Let me just chuck this pig into the ocean. Um, it's the only right thing to do. Uh, I think pigs can swim. Yeah, he's fine. All right, let's try maybe one or two more games, and then I'll just sum it up. All right, here we go. Simpsons hit and run. So this runs really well when you're just on foot. So like right now, it's not a problem at all. I can run around. Um, it doesn't feel quite full speed. There's a few moments of slight slowdown, but it's very, very playable. Um, completely playable. But things kind of fall apart as if I didn't get that. Thank you very much. Uh, things kind of fall apart when you get in the car. I'll show you. So this is all good. I can jump over here. I can fight these bees or wasps. Are they wasps? Go get all my coins. So even when there's all these coins on the screen which are moving, it runs really well. No slowdown in that. But as soon as I get in the car, things will go wrong. Okay, get in the car, and it's okay for the most part, but if you get to points where there's a lot of cars, here we go, slow down, there we go. So it really slows down when you're driving fast, or driving past lots of different things. Bit of slow down there. Again, it's still playable, but you have to be able to cope with the slowdown and the frame rate drops, which will annoy some people, because I know it annoys me. Oh, you piece of piss. Honestly, it still shocks me to my very core that someone hasn't remade or remastered Simpsons Hit and Run yet. I mean, is it a licensing thing? I guess Disney kind of now, in an overarching sense, own The Simpsons. And I don't think there's currently like a, a, a studio, a dev team that has the licensing. I don't know. It's probably going to be a licensing thing or just... Maybe they just don't want to. But good God, a Simpsons Hit and Run um, remaster or remake on current consoles would sell like crazy. I'd buy it. I'd definitely buy it. Game was great. Okay, my last game for the day is Mario Kart Wii running inside the Quest 2 natively once again. Now, this runs surprisingly well considering it's a Wii game, but there's a giant weird kind of see-through box in the top corner. Now I think with some tinkering I'll be able to get that to disappear, but right now I can't figure it out. So it's a real shame, but I wanted to show you this anyway because it's so impressive that this is running as smoothly and as quickly as it is. If you're like me and you enjoy emulators and emulating, then come and check out what the Quest 2 can do. RetroArch runs amazingly on here, Dolphin runs amazingly on here, and there are other things you can get as well, like a Virtual Boy emulator, which is good fun too. If you want to play anything from Atari to Amiga, Commodore, Game Boy, N64, NES, SNES, Mega Drive, PS1, GameCube, Wii, the Quest 2 can do it pretty comfortably. Yes, it's not something they're ever going to advertise, and yes, it's probably frowned upon, but it's a lot of fun. And if you don't want to test it yourself, here's the proof that it works, and it works pretty damn well. It's a shame to end the video on a game that has a big kind of black cube in the corner that I can't figure out and remove, but I wanted to show you this game running because it's probably the most performance intensive that I have in this video. I know I didn't check out PS1, which is a shame. I might actually just record some now and squeeze it in. Um, but this has been the Quest 2 natively emulating games and it's pretty damn impressive. I didn't realize it could do this, and I'm very happy to have found out that it can. If you want to try any of this yourself, I'll put a bunch of links in the description to the websites and videos that I use to get this running. They're all fairly simple, but obviously only do this if you feel comfortable doing it. You will need to have your Quest 2 set up in dev mode, and you'll need to know where to get the games from. Sneaky, sneaky, cheeky places. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and hit subscribe. And I'll see you soon for another one. Next time I make a video, it will be me actually playing VR games, rather than doing weird, emulated things with my quest. Take care of yourselves. See you later.